in Genesis, we have the beginning of just everything. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And we have within that creation narrative, you know, the six days and on the seventh day God rested. We have some of the most wonderful things that are created. When you get day six, it's awesome. Everything to sustain life has already been, all the prerequisites have been met to sustain the life that's created on days five and six. Day five being fish and birds, day six, creatures moving across the land, but not just that, human race. God said, let us make man in our image. And so God takes dirt and makes Adam. And God gave Adam a special job since he was created the same day all these other life forms that were roaming surface of the ground he he gave Adam the job of naming these animals and Adam would look and see all the animals and he would see there were both male and female and he would give them their name but it would be noticeable where is my counterpart and it's when God makes the statement, it is not good for man to be, what? Alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. He causes Adam to fall into a deep sleep and he takes one of Adam's ribs. And from that rib came the most awesome, in my opinion, of all the things that were created on day six. Woman. But not just a woman, but a person who had a role before she was even created. For you see, even as far back as day three, and then especially on day, or, or day four and five especially, uh, and day six, God's first instructions to his creation is be fruitful and multiply. The seed that's bear, the plants bearing seed, be multiplying on the earth. That's day three when you get vegetation. And you have that with the fish, and you have that with the birds, and you have that with all the animals. And it was, God's, it was God's design for the human race to procreate, to reproduce, be fruitful and multiply. The role that this woman that's beautifully fashioned by God is the role of motherhood. And in our opening verse, I'd like to show you in Genesis 3 and verse 20 after Adam gets to name the animals. And yes, there's the narrative of the fall of man that occurs soon after that. But we get back to this verse 20 where Adam gets to name his wife. This is one verse, but I think it implies a lot. Adam named his wife Eve because she would become the mother of all the living. The mother of all the living. This is last week I was on a, a Facebook group discussion page and watching a, a discussion about Adam and Eve being the first parents. And there was some, some dialogue as to, well, were they the only created ones? Who says that we all descend from Adam and Eve? And somebody piped in and said, well, the Bible doesn't say that uh, Adam and Eve are the parents to everyone. Or that they're the single ancestry that we all descend from. When I see Genesis 3 verse 20, I find that there's evidence that we all came from Adam and Eve. She is called in scripture the mother of all the living. So all these beginnings you had, the one that I, is one of my favorites and the one that we want to spotlight on today is the beginning of motherhood. Now I want you to imagine what this would be like for Eve. To have the burden. You know, she has kind of a, a bad rap from this story. After all, it's Adam that says it's her fault, right? It's the one that the serpent Satan, disguised as a serpent, 
perhaps thought, there's the most gullible, there's the one that will fall, I will go to her first, talking to her about the fruit that God said, do not eat. And he tells her that you'll become like God. It looked good to the eyes. And she was only wanting to share with her husband. And in the curse of the serpent, and in the curse of man, and then the curse of woman, because of the fall, because of the sin, pain and childbearing, hard labor. Man, yes, labor on the ground, but for the woman. And then you have the grievances, of course, of being the one blamed, and having the responsibility of when you do finally give birth to that first son and then to that second son yeah painful and yet the reward such a great blessing but then to be a mother to go through the loss of a child when Abel is murdered and to top that off my other son killed him I want you to think about the burden that mother of all living had. But the narrative of Scripture goes all the way from the old through the new, putting in a special frame the honor that's due to moms. And you see examples of great mothers who had faith, hope, They went to God in prayer. You have have several examples of mothers that played a very important role. Eve is one, but but I can't help but think of, of Sarah, through whom, of course, God had said to Abraham back in Genesis 12, that's through your seed, I will give you a great name. I will make your nation great. You will have descendants that outnumber stars of the sky and sand on the seashore and I'm going to give you land as a part of this promise and Sarah tried the best she could to meet that plan along with Abraham to fulfill what God wanted for Abraham one day coming to the conclusion that perhaps this didn't include me but I don't, I don't want to step in the way. I don't want to be in the way. I want to step aside if I have to. And presented Hagar, her maidservant, to Abraham. And God said, no. That's not the way I had planned this. It's with you, Sarah, to bring about the promise I've made with Abraham. And you, say, you see uh, Hannah, who so desperately wants a child, saying, if I have a son... I'll dedicate him to your service. And Samuel is born. You have that story in the Old Testament where when King Solomon is on the throne, to display his wisdom, people would bring all kinds of cases to him. And you remember the case where two mothers brought a baby? You remember that one? And the story's told where one of the babies died. We both have delivered, but one of the babies died and the one mom went into where the other mother's baby was still there, stole him out of the bed, took her as her own. That case is brought before Solomon. Remember Solomon's judgment? Cut the baby in half, give one half to this one, give the other half to the other one. And the real mother stood up with her voice and said, let her have the baby. She was willing to set aside her own preferences for the sake of the health, safety, and welfare of her child. And Solomon says, I know who the real mom is now. Because moms that are honorable are willing to sacrifice what rightfully and biologically is theirs, their able to sacrifice for the betterment of their child. And the life of that baby was spared. She was an honorable mom. And then you get the New Testament, and you can't help but think of Elizabeth, uh, who is old in her age and barren, but she is, becomes pregnant and is able to bring forth John the Baptist, 
And then you got the story of Mary, mother of Jesus. Think of that. You're not married yet, you're betrothed, and you wind up pregnant, and it's God's plan. The baby inside her was of the Holy Spirit. How does that go over at the coffee shop? Yeah, right. And to go through at a young age, to bring a child in this world, and during the time that's the most inconvenient where you've got to go report to the city, you pay your taxes, it's a census year, and you go to the little town of Bethlehem, they've had to travel, and there's no room in the inn. I mean, what kind of conditions do you bring a baby into the world? What kind of conditions? What kind of conditions do you think? What you might suppose they had to bring a baby into the world? And then to see this child grow up knowing that he's a special, unique, and every mother thinks that of their children, right? But Mary knows, and there are things that Jesus does that she ponders in her heart or stores in her heart knowing that her boy is going to be God's anointed one, is God's anointed one. And then to watch him grow older, mature, develop, get the following that he did, and then to get crucified on a cross. And she's there for that. Honorable moms. Now the Bible has a lot to say about moms. We've seen some of those. We see in Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 16, this is also referred to in Ephesians chapter 6 when it says, children, obey your parents and the Lord. And it gives this reasoning based in Deuteronomy. Honor your father and your what? Mother, as the Lord God has commanded you so that you may live long and that it may go well with you in the land the Lord your God is giving you. We've got a lot in the Proverbs in chapter 1, verses 8 through 9. Listen, my son, to your father's instruction. And do not forsake your mother's teaching. They are a garland to grace your head and a chain to adorn your neck. In chapter 6, my son, keep your father's command and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Bind them always on your heart. Fasten them around your neck. Proverbs 23 and verse 22. Listen to your father who gave you life and do not despise your mother when she is old. And one of my favorite passages in the scripture is the very last part of the last chapter of Proverbs, beginning in around verse 10, where you have this description, a beautiful description of a wife of noble character. And uh, all those things are enumerated. The things that seem to be highlighted the most is the, her role as a mother. We have in this passage an honorable mom. And we read this toward the end in verse 28. Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also. And he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive, and beauty is fleeting. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. And so what I have for you on your outline are just some reflections. This is not necessarily a textual-based sermon. It's more reflective and observations of kind of the synopsis I just gave of honorable moms and the verses that we just saw together. But here are five things that I see as honorable moms that are addressed in Scripture and what I believe is still true today. These principles hold true. And these are the things that I'd like for you to write down filling in the blank. The first one is, and you'll hear this a lot when you talk about mothers, one of the roles that a mom plays is this word nurture. Honorable moms nurture the soul of the child. Nurture is somehow wrapped up in the nature of a mom. And it's a sustainable, persistent thing that they keep at. They don't just, let's check in on our child every once in a while. No, it's there, you're, you're there steady with them. It's 24-7, isn't it? And you're always constantly thinking about what's next and what's best for your child and it's where spirituality starts, nurture. I love the fact that Paul praised Timothy for his genuine faith, but in doing so, he's actually giving honor to Timothy's mom and his grandmother, Lois and Eunice, who instilled into Timothy that faith that may, he made his own. You see, his father was a, a Greek. He wasn't a religious influence on his life, 
but his mom and his grandmother was. And who here today might can say that your spiritual vitality and your upbringing in the faith was credited to a mom or a grandmother? Who could say that? Nurturing the soul of the child. Second one. Facilitate a healthy future for the child. You want what's best for your child. You are biased for your kid. They're the best thing you've got. And you're trying to remove all the obstacles best way you know how and give them all the advantages that you can possibly give. And as they're leaving for school, make good choices is what you say to them. And you are trying to make sure you're at every parent and teacher's meeting or you're trying to make sure that you're looking at those grades. You are trying to make sure that They're physically healthy. You're taking them to the doctors when you need to. You want them to have a healthy future. And then to measure the child's progress. I don't know how many of you had a mom that did this. And I've been in some homes where I can still see the little hatch marks that a mom made a kid stand up at the doorway at the door jam and they took a pencil across the top of your head and marked it on the door. How many of you had a mom that did that? And perhaps you can go back to that very house you were raised in and see, here was me in 78, here I am in 86, here I am in 94, here I am today. I think if my mom were to continue measuring me, I might start shrinking. And if she started measuring this way, it would get larger. That's kind of neat. But they, they just, not just measuring their physical growth of the child, but to measure the successes again, making sure there's quality control in the education in the diet, in, in all these aspects, making sure you go to church. Then there's that treasure word. I mean, your mom's collected everything, right? All those ribbons, all those awards, all those track medals. I mean, I, I was in contest that I know that I didn't get even a third or fifth or sixth place. I, I might have gotten honorable mention or even those Even those contests where you didn't get anything but a ribbon that said participant and mom treasures it. She's so proud of you. And when you're 30 years old and you come over, she hands you the box. I'm no longer in charge of this. Take this home for your wife to deal with. (laughs) And then it sits in our attic for a while. A mom that treasures. I love the fact that Mary, again, referring to the life of Jesus throughout his teaching, sometimes she would treasure it in her heart. Right there. And then finally, ensure the child's spirit to excel in life. This is where the motivator comes into play. I don't know how many times I've heard this week or have seen, and you'll hear it today some more, my mom was my best cheerleader at all games, at all events, at all functions, and she was there The word always seems to appear a lot when you hear moms being talked about by their children. Let's do some of that now as we listen in. Let me start off by saying happy Mother's Day, Mom. Um, My mom is one of the best people I know. She's made me the man I am today. Um, Every great part of me is from her. Uh, There's not much more I can say that uh, most of you guys don't already know. Uh, she's a true inspiration uh, of who I want to be you know the rest of my life so uh, I hope I can live up to that I love you mom hello for this Mother's Day I wanted to talk about my mother and uh, what she means to me on, on, on this Mother's Day and all the things that are special about her um, she she's very talented as an artist she has a great love of music and and uh, she always encouraged me to pursue my love of art and and as far as her love of music goes, I find it mildly entertaining that she now listens to the kind of music that I always used to listen to as a kid, and she was always telling me to turn down. Um, of course, she raised me, uh, brought me up in the way I should go, uh, told me all the things that I should do, all the things that I shouldn't do, and then I went out and did all the things that I wasn't supposed to do and didn't do the things I was supposed to do. In spite of that, uh, she loves me unconditionally, and I love her too. Happy Mother's Day. I hope you have a good day today. Mom, I love you so much. You have always inspired me, taught me right from wrong, loved me no matter what I've done. You love all of us children unconditionally. You don't put labels on anyone. 
you've taught us to love. It's all of our hearts. And you're so precious. I love you, Mom. Happy birthday, Mom. I love you, Mom. <laughs> Hi, Mom. It's me. I just wanted to tell you how much you mean to me and that you are one of my best friends. And good or bad, right or wrong, there's no denying each other because we are definitely knit from the same cloth. And I just want to tell you that I love you and happy Mother's Day. Say happy Mother's Day again. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, Mama. Throughout my life, Mom's always been there um, for pretty much everything. She's been my uh, biggest fan. She took me to all of my dance, vocal, piano, musical rehearsals, pretty much anything that I was in. And um, she also was at about every performance, just about. And she's just always been there. And I know that in anything that I do, she will always be there. And she can. she's the person that I can turn to no matter what. I love you, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. My mom has always has meant a lot to me. She's always been there for me. She's been an encouragement when things are tough, hard. When I had a speech impediment, she would always drive me to Ponca. We'd have a special bond doing that. She'd be with me and encourage me. She has a special love, a special bond, and she's just been with me through all these years, and I know when I make that move to Ohio, she'll continue to love me and support me, even though I'm gonna be many miles away, and I just love you, Mom. I just think it's kind of humorous that Lee had to tell his own mom who he was. Mom, it's me. <laughs> Let's applaud all of our moms this morning. So we're going to sing a song here, and if you have any need for this church to pray over you about, if there's a way to encourage you, we want to extend God's mercy and love to you and hopefully this will be a good day for you but maybe a day that you need to change and to be encouraged and maybe you have something on your heart you want to share that's what this will be about if you want to become a Christian and be baptized for your forgiveness of sins to to have a clean start and to have the kind of spiritual upbringing and the spiritual guide you need in your life that's an opportunity for you as we stand and sing this song to come to the front <laughs> 